Yes, hello, dear friends of the St. Petersburg International Legal Forum. It is my great pleasure and honor to be able to participate in this special forum, an online forum, of course, unprecedented uh, in the history of the forum. Uh, first of all, let me really thank the organizers for willing to go ahead with their plans of having an event, even though it is not in the format as they had imagined, as nobody could have imagined, uh, you know, the situation which uh, we are currently uh, facing, we are currently facing. Mm, the topic of uh, our forum is um, the rule of Corona. A uh, thought provocative title, I would say, because in th indeed as, as lawyer I think the, the first reaction would be to say that even in these very challenging times we are currently facing, uh, the rule of law should still prevail. And I would like to illustrate this idea by referring to some examples we've seen in um, my area of the law, which is private international law, and more specifically about the enforcement of international commercial contracts in these times of Corona. Um, all of us have noticed that this situation is unprecedented, it has caught us uh, by surprise, has caught um, many states also by surprise, and uh, of course as a reaction, as an immediate reaction, there have been quite uh, drastic measures that had to be set up. And uh, some of those uh, measures, of course, uh, clearly try to reinforce the state structure and have to and, and try to impose certain protective measures to make sure that uh, citizens of a given jurisdiction are sufficiently protected in these very um, exceptional times we are currently living. How does this impact? on international contracts. We've seen many, many examples around the world and possibly I'd like to just uh, illustrate uh, the, this idea with, with two examples. For example, in Italy, there has been a new law that has been enacted and this law contains um, self-proclaimed mandatory provisions and uh, what this means and the effect that those uh, laws will have is that Italian citizens will be able to get reimbursement of the prices they had already paid on the transport or uh, package uh, travel contracts or only accommodation contracts by persons that have been um, affected by the coronavirus. This is of course a very legitimate goal to try to protect these people so that they at least do not suffer these economic um, losses. At the same time, one could wonder, from the perspective of uh, the enforcement of such contracts, whether this is the uh, adequate way to go about uh, the unilaterally declaration of um, the mandatory nature, the overriding mandatory nature of such provisions. So, um, from the perspective of uh, the rules that determine what is the right balance between, on the one hand, party autonomy and the possibilities for these contracts to be governed by any other law than Italian law. And on the other hand, the application of the overriding mandatory prov provisions, there is a new balance that has to be struck, struck sorry, in these exceptional circumstances. Let me give you a second example, which um, is uh, very well known to you in these times of scarcity of medical devices. Think about masks, think, think about ventilators, you know that China is uh, the main producer of uh, those medical uh, suppliers around the world um, has for, month, for more than two months been affected by a very severe lockdown. As a result of that, the Council for the Promotion of International Trade in China, which is a quasi-governmental entity, has issued many force majeure certificates which uh, were willing to exempt the Chinese companies from uh, their contractual obligations also under international contracts. This is a current practice in uh, commercial um, law. The question is whether such force majeure certificates will, be, uh, have a, will have a legal value in contracts that possibly can be governed by other laws than the Chinese law. So these are the two examples uh, that I'd like to bring to your consideration. Of course, you are all aware that uh, perhaps a new balance has to be struck 
between, on the one hand, party autonomy in normal circumstances and the operation of uh, um, devices such as the overriding mandatory provisions or the exception of public policy in these challenging times in which we are all uh, living. It is true that it will be for each court or each arbitrator or each adjudicator to determine what is really uh, overriding and whether the uh, exceptional circumstances in which we live currently justify the um, surpassing application of such uh, corrective devices, counterbalancing devices. From my perspective, what I'd like to offer is the fact that in our international legal community, we should, even in these times of distress and crisis, avoid a homeward tendency as much as possible. And how should we do that? I think we should do that by treating these situations as what they are, international commercial situations. And from that perspective, I, it is only logical that we have recourse to international legal standards. Which international legal standards? Well, in this area of international commercial contracts, and specifically with regard to party autonomy and the governing law of uh, those international commercial contracts, let me remind you that uh, the uh, international standard has been developed in 2015 by the Hague Conference. Um, the 2005 Hague Principles on the law applicable, on the governing law to this international commercial contracts should help us uh, in that regard. In that instrument, we will find, let's say, the appropriate balance as to how those exceptional circumstances should uh, justify or not um, the uh, enactment of such national provisions in Italy, China or any other part of the world. Well, I very much look forward to your comments. Thank you very much for your attention and I wish you a very nice forum.